Let's make some meat. Let's go ahead and start with, uh, this is the first time we've ever made meat in this house. This guy's made meat a few times and it turns out really delicious. So he's got me interested in it. And I'm gonna try this, uh, it's a bomb, B-O-M-M. -M. You wanna tell me what that is? Braise one month meat. That's We're gonna do it. Really popular meat recipe. Right. And you can find it on his uh, website, which is, I don't remember right now. <laughs> so we're going to start off with some star sanding here so we can sanitize all of our equipment that we're going to be using here today. And I'm just going to sanitize everything in the bucket that we're going to be using. So we're going to, let's go ahead and mix that around. Take that and stick it inside the cylinder, and then just fill the whole thing up. Mm -hmm. right, we'll just leave that sitting here, it's all good. Anything else we need to sanitize? Um, our tubing that we're going to be using. And actually, I'm going to run some through it. Good to go out the other side, just like that. And all that foam in there, it's okay to have that in there. Yeah, that's what that's what Star Sand basically says don't fear the foam. Don't fear the foam. And you won't have to worry about the honey because that's pasteurized. Pasteurized. So it's worth the day, pasteurized. Um, All right, so let's go ahead and we're. I got this this uh, bottle here that's already filled with some of the star sand. And I'm actually going to use it for all the stuff that I can't get to. So I'm going to spray it down. It's actually probably not a bad idea to have this anyway. But I can spray everything down with it, get it all good and sanitize, even the outside. Why not? Would you agree, Larry? Yeah, and the bottle works because. When this is done, you got to dump that out, but you can set that in a bottle for like a month and just reuse it for anything you need to. So if you come back and you have to take a gravity reading or you want to start a new batch, then you don't have to keep filling up buckets of uh, star sand water. That gets expensive. Yeah. So it's just a way to make it do it. This is one of the most fun, cheapest hobbies you could probably ever have. And it really wasn't that bad, actually. I, I probably paid about $200 all collectively for two food grade buckets, food grade, five gallon food grade buckets, the uh, lids, airtight lids, uh, grommets, half inch grommets, half inch tubing, and that was five foot of that, uh, eight gallons of water, 20 pounds of honey, and the Fermit K, yeah. and Fermit O. Yeah, these were three forty nine dollars a piece, so pretty cheap hobby and I think when I started like I'm just doing one gallon batches and I just make uh, I think I spent $150 on all the equipment and then after that you're spending 10 or $20 every couple months just to make a batch of it yeah it's not bad at all really because how much you're spending on each bottle of meat somewhere between 10 and $25 per bottle depending on where you get it from and what you get yeah I've seen you know 30 or $40 depending on and it can be hard to find like, I'm lucky enough to have a liquor store by my house that has it, but um, other than that, I might have to drive a half hour, 40 minutes just to go get a bottle of meat. And that's gas. not everybody sells it, yeah. <laughs> and gas prices. So. That's actually why I started making it, because I couldn't find any near me that I wanted. Um, so is it okay to use my hand in the star meat? Or the star meat? In yeah. the sand? I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to essentially just sanitize your hand. This is just an acid solution. Yeah. Or like you said, you could just take the bottle and spray it too if you so want. So take the bottle and just spray it around. If you're worried about it, I guess. Yeah, just because you didn't didn't fill the whole bucket up. Which is just going to save you a uh, star sand. And I'm being a little bit messy with this. I've got a towel down, which y'all can see. And uh, we have another bucket over here because we're doing eight gallons. We're going to do eight gallons between two five-gallon buckets, which will give us roughly a gallon of headspace for expansion, gases and stuff. And then I'm going to try something a little unconventional with a... A bottle on the side and I'm going to use this tubing 
in place of an airlock. He's going to make a blow-off tube, essentially. Right. So that would be why we, we drilled a hole and we put a rubber grommet in there. It fits good and tight. And the uh, half-inch tubing with the half-inch grommet should work really well. So are we ready? To, can we pour this out into the other bucket? Or we need yeah, to I would it? dump this into the other bucket. Okay. And then Nice and clean. Yep. Now we just flip this upside down a little. Any extra just drain out so you don't have any mead. Right. Not that it's going to hurt the mead, but just the reason to have all that extra acid in there. Because right. you know that acid can hurt your yeast. Uh, don't hurt the yeast. You got to worry about the. Some people worry about the pH level. <laughs> all right. Um, definitely remember to get food grade buckets. Yeah. Food grade plastic. This is safe for storing food in. So we have two and a half gallons of water here, and then we have two gallons offset of the camera over here that we can't see on the camera. But we'll use uh, we'll use the one gallon containers to rinse out all the bottle of honey. We have a permit for that. Just and spring water. Larry made mention that spring water is very important to use here due to the minerals content of the water. Don't use distilled water and definitely don't use tap water. If you use tap water, you're kind of defeating the purpose with the whole, you know, sterilization of everything. Yeah, they say you can use tap water, but you have to worry about the chlorine in your tap water. And then also, one thing that worries me is the inside of your faucet may have mold in it or may not be. Yeah. You know, so I just use spring water because it's easier. Definitely don't want to worry about. You don't want to have mold in here. So is there a way to just take this whole cap? Off? Maybe. It, can just it looks like a. Like a yeah, it looks like a little cap right there. Let's see if you can pop the table. There we go. He's got it. I think I got it. He got it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that tab does anything. Okay. It. It's just I already told him you got it. You need scissors? There you go. Or not? Take care of that. Let's see. Let's see if the knife will get. All right. We're gonna do surgery on this bottle. Watch your face, Larry. All right. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna dump that, and I'll pop a hole in the other side of it. So drain quick. Pop hole right here. There we go. This video is about to become. How to send your friend to the hospital? <laughs> video on me. It was an accident. I promise. I don't have insurance. Uh, new <laughs> new uh, new reason to call it Vikings blood. Vikings blood. Why he's going now? He's going to some more. All right. Lots of honey. As this is a five gallon batch and you can scale it all the way down to, I've even seen people just do like a single bottle, like a single wine size bottle of mead. Uh, typically you do, you know, gallons, five gallons of popular, one gallon. And again, uh, yeah, you can. I'm gonna hold on to a little bit of that here. So we still have a half gallon of that as well. Oh, awesome. We'll give ourselves a little safety net. Now it's your turn to drink, huh? Mm -hmm. Here, have some fun with some honey. Fun with honey. Sounds interesting. I need a huge funnel. A big, what, 10 gallon funnel would be great. Yeah. You just dump all the bottles in there at once. So funny. And this is the advantage of doing it with a bucket instead of one of the carboys in primary because you don't have to worry about the funnel. You don't have to, you know, if you want to add fruit or whatever you want to put in there, you know, it's it's just easily accessible. And then as far as you're talking about the blow up tube, like if you're going to do four gallons in a five gallon bucket, you have less to worry about as far as uh, the fermentation going crazy and um, overflowing out the top. Because that's something else you got to think about. And I've heard stories about people who. You know, it overflows and makes a mess in their closet or, you know, even where uh, they put the lid on it or something and it was fermenting and they didn't realize that as yeast creates uh, alcohol, it also releases CO2 and you can actually create 
So if you make those That's what it'd be. glass carboys with the, uh, you know, with the lid on it, then that thing can explode in your closet. So you just have to know what you're doing and be careful with it. So these are all one pound servings of honey. And then we have a two pound bottle right here in front of the camera. That'll be the bottle that we're gonna use for the, the uh, blow off, the water trap for the blow off lid. So we're gonna do eight gallons of it, just traditional honey mead in the primary stage. And then in the secondary stage, we're gonna split one of the four gallon buckets into one gallon of carboys and do individual flavoring in the secondary stage. That's the plan, right? Yeah, so that's when you're going to add your fruit or whatever you're going to add to the uh, to the mead. You know, if you want to put like strawberries in it or any kind of herbs or anything like that. Now you can put them right in the primary if you want to. Um, I just think that it's easier in secondary because depending on what fruit you're using or what you're doing with it, some people can have issues. Like, Pineapple is one that I hear a lot of people have issues with in the primary. Delicious. Um, okay. So a lot of people add pineapples to the secondary instead of primary. So do you have, I didn't even think about this, but do you have something to, to uh, stir all this stuff with? We have a big whisk, a one-year-old, you can probably reach to the bone maybe. <laughs> Never mind, it says keep babies away from buckets. Keep babies away from buckets. <laughs> That's the last ingredient is baby arm. Baby arm. <laughs> That's what makes the meat taste good. Sanitize the baby arm. And I just sanitized the, the funnel over here to put water back into these bottles to, to rinse them out. Or Larry's good enough, he can just do it without a funnel. Oh, is that what you were asking for the funnel? I'm sorry. <laughs> Woo! This is big work. Just put the water in there, put the lid on it, shake it up. Oh, that reach. That reach. Probably have like a big old metal spoon. Drop it back in, make sure you get the lid on it. Make sure you get all the honey out of there. That was expensive. It's expensive honey. You can probably not use that one. Looks like he's doing a pretty good job of it. This is a strategic operation here. I think he's shooting a honey bottle too. In his life. Yeah. Well, when you do it with the one gallon, instead of just mixing it, you take the whole gallon and shake it up, and you have to get oxygen in. Because the yeast likes oxygen in the primary. May I get a trash can? You don't want oxygen in the secondary, though, because you can create uh, vinegar with the acetyl factors. But the primary, the yeast needs oxygen. That's good to know. So. Oxygen at first, but not there. I'm curious, will this lid fit that two pound bottle? Oh, it will like not. It. Now I was hoping it would because the hole's in the center with the two pound bottle, the hole's on the side, but it's alright, we can still drill it out. And for our bottle that goes over here on the side, we just put uh, star sand in it. Yeah, uh, star sand. It's typically what you use for, I mean, for a blow-off bottle, I don't know if it's as important. Star saying is basically just killing the bacteria, making sure bacteria can't get back into the tube and your mead to compete with your yeast. So it's probably not bad. 
Yeah, it's, it's not a bandage. Yeah. It's really important with an airlock. I don't know about with a blow-off tube, because I don't usually use those, but with an airlock it's extremely important. You either use uh, star sand water or uh, 80 proof alcohol. So if you have like a cheap vodka or something, you know, I've seen people do that as well. They tell you not to use rubbing alcohol. So go slowly. Because if something happens and that dumps back into your, your brew, then it's going it's gonna to be disgusting. Gotcha. Well, this is going to be awesome. I'm super excited. Yeah, and that's going to be the biggest problem is, is you make it and then it's like, I want to drink it, I want to drink it, I want to stay drink out it. of it. Yeah, and you're supposed to let it sit and age. But that's the good thing about the bombs one month meat is that you don't, um, or braise one month meat is it, it's supposed to be done fermenting in a week, ready to bottle and, and drink in a month, right? And the key to that seems to be the yeast nutrients. Um, that's pretty significant too, is uh, the, the willpower. Yeah. Definitely something I struggled with when I made my first bottle. And eventually I just broke down and went and found me and drove out and got it. Because <laughs> like, if not, I'm going to drink everything in my wait. closet. So we're not too worried about making sure this is exactly four gallons, but we're going to try to get it as close as possible. I'm not going to go through the trouble of weighing the water and making sure that we it, It's more it. important that you have a room in your bucket for everything you're going to put in there than it is for this to be exactly four gallons. The best meat I've ever had. The best meat I ever had was uh, at the Renaissance Festival. They had a green apple sizer. And that's what really made me want to start making meat. The, the meat that I've made that I like the best has only been three of them. would be the strawberry meat. I just took and make a basic meat and then I took some strawberries, froze them, cut them up. Let them thaw, cut them up, and then I boiled them down and um, strained them into mead that was already made. And that was probably the best, best flavor mead that I had. <laughs> you get meat all over your face. Squirt. Sounds delicious. Yeah. I thought it was. Wait, okay, I didn't have a strawberry. No, I had the banana wine. You had the banana? You've had the banana wine that I made, and you've had the regular simple sizer that I made. Houston, I think we have a problem here. Don't worry about touching the bottom, just, okay. Try to get that out whole, there you go. So this is gonna mix all the honey up with the water, and it's also going to add oxygen, which like you said, the yeast needs um, prior. awesome for this you know the the attachment you stick on a drill to to mix paint or they, they have those they had those at the store today I didn't say anything because I didn't know if you had something already picked out or like we talked about the uh, uh, what's it called the list you get tired of it, you know, so I'm gonna have to get a a longer uh, whisk I didn't take that into consideration. And uh, if you guys are thinking about doing this, remember this is the first time I've ever done this. And he hasn't actually done this recipe yet. So we're both experimenting with this just by following a recipe that came off of YouTube. And so, I've also never done it in a five gallon bucket before. I do the one gallon single carboy. You can talk. You don't have to sit in the bedroom. You can talk. My wife is hiding behind the camera. Because <laughs> she's super camera shy. You can't see her, but she's waving at you right now. <laughs> I was commentating. Commentating. She's the cute card she's, person. She's the producer. <laughs> she's making us do this, and we really don't want to. She's got a gun. I may not have a gun, but I do have the biggest You can coffee. actually see... The honey, uh, there is a small, like, quarter inch thick line at the bottom of the honey that's still settling out in the, uh, the solution here. We're going to try to make sure that everything is suspended and, and equally mixed up. 
He's a lot better at this. He's making a tornado. It's because I'm fat and I cook. <laughs> Larry, you know what? You guys should actually give a little bit of feedback because this guy right here is a really good cook. And he is really considering making a YouTube channel about kitchen cooking at home and stuff like that. The guy makes some phenomenal food. Delicious food. And you really wouldn't... It, you know, you go out and you pay a lot of money for the type of food that he cooks for just pennies on the dollar. And I think really what we should do is say, leave a comment and tell us if you'd like to see Larry create a channel for cooking at home. Because I really think that it's necessary. I think it would be good. Maybe we'll do a drunken cooking session. That would be good. Ooh. Get together and drink meat and cook. Meat and meat mallets. <laughs> meat and meat. <laughs> meat and meat. <laughs> Who gave you guys butcher knives? <laughs> is that good for now? Or I, don't know. I, mean, I think it's good. I can't see the bottom of it, but... I see it. She it's still that. Just slightly. Just slightly. I can see it. There's the mallet. Larry. The logo. <laughs> you create that little vortex and get your hand down there with this. See what we have here. It smells like honey. <laughs> <It smells delicious. laughs> All right, so uh, that's step one. Let's so move on to step two. Now we get to take that uh, cylinder and dump it in that bucket over there. And we're just going to take a gravity reading. This is how you can tell how much alcohol you're going to have. Okay. So here you go. Let's just let that dry a little bit. It's important to, to, to drain, so because now you're introducing a new solution into there. So I always like to take this and put it in there first, and then take your uh, turkey baster, which people use different things. It's a meat baster. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is our starting. And off camera, we have a a notebook over here. We're gonna be jotting all this information down into so that we know when we're actually complete with the process. What did you say we were shooting for? 14.5 to 17? It's a uh, 1.097 to 1.117 uh, I believe. Did you get that? <laughs> all right. So. And what you're going to look at is on the scale here, on the hydrometer, what you want is you want to look at the gravity. 1.000 is just water with nothing in it. What this is actually measuring is the density, right? So, spin it around a little bit. Yeah. We may have added just a little bit too much water. We got 1.082. 1.082. And to keep up with everything, I'm going to mark this B1. And naturally, I want to be called B2. Do you want to roll with the 1.082, or did you want to put more honey in it? Uh, well, do you think we should put more honey in? Would that be? If you want to get it up to 12 or 13 percent then yeah you probably have to get more okay. honey. So let's do more honey. Honey, will you grab me some more honey? Prefer to no, 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 that's good. Just just Yeah, I would think just one of them would be okay. She wants it like twenty. <laughs> She's like, I'm gonna drink one of these. <laughs> Everything's not about you, Eric. I know that. <laughs> I just don't want to hurt. <laughs> yeah, if you're not thinking of something else I could do with these honey bottles, that'd be great. So throw them all these away. And use them as gift bottles for the meat. Gift bottles. <laughs> it's actually not bad them and put plants in them. Plants? Yeah. Okay. Little hanging plants and you can hang up. I like to clean them out, sanitize them, and use them to put some of your meat in and give them as Christmas gifts. Or you can put some of your lotion in it. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, save me some. Okay. Because it has a nice lid, too. It does have a little, a little squirt lid like your one. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's perfect for my lotions and massage oils. All right.
I do have a little bit of a concern with if there's a tiny bit of honey still sitting at the bottom, which I'm pretty sure there is, because I've been seeing that when we rinse these out, it's generally either use a little bit more water or have to rinse it out twice. That is not a problem with fermentation, but it may throw off your ground beer. That's what I'm afraid of. Maybe there, maybe, maybe it was a little bit shy on honey, but not as shy as we thought because there is some honey still settled at the bottom. I will work on getting a longer device to mix this up. And you can't over mix this either, especially at, at the beginning. Don't you mix my mead too much. Yeah, you can't over mix it. You can't put too much oxygen in it. The mead, the yeast really does need oxygen to make alcohol. I think we need to uh, have a safety mead. <laughs> These store-bought bottles, I'm going to use. I'm going to clean these out, sterilize them, and then reuse them since they're uh, they're dark glass, which would be perfect for for aging. For sharing with friends. <laughs> and that. Yeah. There's always that. Will you fill his cup, please? Thank you. So now we're set at 1.092. 1.092. Like you said, if there's some honey down at the bottom, maybe a little higher than that. But that was kind of, that was pretty close to what we were aiming for, so I think you're good. Okay. What was your final rating? 1.092. And what's the perfect rating? Uh, 1.097 or, or above, Is essentially. Good reading? Good. Yeah, he's wanting to get 12% alcohol out of it, roughly. At least. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and you, there's a formula for that, which is... You take the original gravity and then you take the final gravity once it's done fermenting. You subtract the final gravity from the original gravity and then you multiply that by 131.25. So and that'll tell you how much alcohol, what the alcohol percentage is by volume. And so for more alcohol, I just got to put some more honey in it when y'all aren't looking? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, the, the amount of alcohol is going to be determined by how much sugar, fermentable sugar is in it as well as what strain of yeast you're using, because different strains of yeast have different alcohol tolerances. And the one we're using goes up to 18%, but sometimes they can go up to 20%. Um, but if you put too much honey in it initially, you'll essentially overpower those yeasts and they'll stop fermenting. That's how you get stuck fermentations. Um, this is, we're, we're using a EC1118, which is known to basically eat through anything. It's a champagne yeast. And it's made to be hardy to, you know, go through tough environments and to eat every bit of sugar that you put in front of it. So it shouldn't be a problem at all. And this one, even if we did put a little bit too much, but I've learned in like for one gallon, I've learned do not put more than three pounds of honey in there. <laughs> if, if you want to add, you know, maybe later add honey and nutrients, you know, what they call step feeding, then you could try to do that to maybe up the alcohol a little bit. But um, I would not put start out with more than three pounds of honey. Good to know. Good enough. Okay, so we're gonna be. Do we put this in now, or do we put our? Yeah, now that you've got the uh, original gravity, now you're ready to add your yeast nutrients. Okay, and so. Um, all right. So we have. Once again, we have the Fermate K and Fermate O. And these are both. I believe these are both. Uh, now this is a one ounce. And this is a 12 gram, so almost half an ounce. Uh, these were about 10 bucks each, which will go a long way from what I'm seeing. Well, they were, they were uh, four bucks each. Four bucks each, and they should go a really long way. Yeah. Denard Brewing, that was the website where we got the recipe from. But, what was um, that website? Denardbrewing.com. That's. Uh, How do you spell that? Dr. Braze. It's D E N A R D. Brewing, B R E W I N G dot com. Well, I'm going to look it up. And that's Dr. Bray's, uh, that's his website. He's the one that came up with this recipe. The only thing is that we, we're not using the exact yeast he's using, and we're also not using the um, potassium carbonate because they just didn't have it at the brew shop. Which that's for, the, basically, that's to lower the pH balance so you just help your, meat, your yeast thrive. 
So let's move on to the one teaspoon. So very important. Let's only do two teaspoons since it's 0.4 and we round it up to a half, it should be 0.5. So let's only do two for five gallons or four gallons. Right? Yeah, sorry, I got stuck on Paw Patrol. Oh, <laughs> the Paw Patrol. Maybe I'll, I get distracted. So I have a very important question. How early should we start this if I want it ready by Scarborough? Well, this should. This is supposed to go for a month, right? The way he does it. Uh -huh. So, it's at two. least a month before Scarborough. Okay. Two teaspoons. And then you got the knife. I'll be going to open that and just do two teaspoons of that as well. And this is going to be Fermade K nutrient. You know what else you can use these honey bottles for? You can clean them out and put your nutrients in there and stick them in the fridge. Oh, nice. As a jar instead of these little flimsy bags. Alright, we're going to do two loose. I'm not packing these down at all. So, two just level one teaspoon. Alright. So that's two teaspoons of O and two teaspoons of K. Okay, now we're gonna add our yeast. Our yeast, we're using the five gram, I say EC1118. Yeah, Lava and EC1118. And technically, if you wanted to, you could just use one packet per five gallon bucket. Uh, we went ahead and did two packets because I also see people put a whole packet in a one gallon just to make it go faster. And we're not doing a yeast starter which you don't have to do a yeast starter, but it just helps. So we're just gonna put more yeast in it. We'll actually do a yeast starter on the next one we do. Yeah, it takes like a day to do the yeast starter. And that's another thing as well, is you can't really over pitch your yeast. What is a yeast starter? A yeast starter would be essentially, you would take nutrients and you would take the, um, a little bit of your must or just sugar and put it in a um, separate container, smaller container and you would put that on a stir plate and keep it up to about 75 degrees Fahrenheit and you would just mix that with oxygen constantly for about a day and it just between the nutrients the, the sugar that's in there it gets that yeast um, going so that yeast starts to procreate and cre create more yeast so you just have it, a huge yeast colony that's already active right. it's already it's just just massive like it's already going and then you dump that in there it's already got nutrient in it's already got sugar and it's already got the active yeast and now the colony is huge and, and it just, just go to town eating yeah it just helps it go through the sugar a lot quicker a lot easier it just you know you're not going to have as many issues um, with that so i mean that's really what it's used for and then let me go ahead and mix this in again That was the sound of a one-year-old getting into the toilet. <laughs> He's not allowed to have any meat. <laughs> not with those hands. That's why we don't let him stir. So we're going to mix this up really good. Let me go ahead and bring you guys over so you can see inside. That's it. You should be ready to just put the uh, lid on. And put the tube in. So we toss it again. Do it again. This, this should be good in San Tasto. Nothing's touched it. Uh, let me no. Turn it around. Yeah. Let me put the hole on this side. What are you doing? Oh, the bottle. Just put the star, star sand in this bottle. And for now, all I'm going to do is feed the tube down into the bottle so that we can move on to the, the second 
batch, but later I will drill the hole out so that we can basically pull this lid off, discard the lid. I'm going to leave that hole and drill another hole right here. This hole will just be a vent and then I can actually feed the tube through the hole right here and that leaves a very small hole for least amount of toxins and uh, contaminants to get in there. I don't speak much. You don't talk to you, Jude. <laughs> you got the handle on the back. You always want your airlock or blow-off tube on the front so you can still lift it up and carry it around with the handle. That's good to know. So yeah, it'll essentially just fit in there like that. Looks like a good hole. I don't think that's going anywhere. Do I need to cut that down a little bit more, Larry? What do you think? Um, I mean, you can. I guess it depends on how pretty you want to look. Well, you've worked with me before. <laughs> so. And this think, tubing is for a water line. Right there. All right. gotcha. This is water line tubing, so it's a, it's also a food food grade material as well. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut this a little bit shorter, so when we feed this down in there, it's not poking out so much. And I can see right now, I am gonna have to uh, make the hole in the lid, like I was saying, just so it'll hold it down. But this will be perfect because one. It's going to filter through the, the water, which will allow no oxygen or contaminants to go back through the tube back into the container. You're going to know that this is fermenting when, so all these bubbles are going to settle out, but you're going to know this is fermenting when the CO2 starts to travel in through the tube into this, and you're going to start to see bubbles in, in this bottle, and it's going to bubble up. And that's how you're going to know that this has started fermenting. It can take, I've seen it start up in as little as an hour. And I've seen it start up in, you know, 8 to 12 hours, so. Perfect, man. I like this. This this looks like it's going to do good. It's a pretty cool setup. All right, so I'll keep this, I'll keep this lid with this. And we're going to move this off the table. It's just had to be trying. I'm going to use my strong arm. All right. Hey, hey Silas. <laughs> exactly what they tell babies not to do. Sanitize their hands. <laughs> oh, these have wine on them, so I have oh, like... Oh, that's me. Me, wine, <laughs> whatever. He's moving on, so I don't have to go change. All right, so you want to go ahead and start the second batch? And uh, before we get too much water in there, maybe mix it up. Yeah, yeah sound good? So I still have, I still have, yeah, all the uh, the ingredients. Once again, food grade material. Throw it all in there. Our You're sanitizing. Right. Yeah. Throw everything in there that you used on the last batch. Throw it all back in there and re-sanitize it. And like I said before, whenever we did the, the first batch, whenever I was done with the, the water that has the star saying in it, I just dipped it into this bucket, which was just sitting right down here. And some people go crazy with sanitization. I don't, and I've never had a problem. But some people go absolutely nuts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're like terrified of any little thing. But after a point, you're, you're kind of good because you got to remember that honey is antibacterial natu naturally. And then you've also got to remember that it's creating alcohol. And once it gets up to like 15% alcohol or more, like it's, you don't have to worry a whole lot about it. It's in the early stages that you really have to worry. That's also, you know, in the early stages you want oxygen, late stages you don't. Uh, you don't have to worry about it as much once it gets to that 15% mark. But not all meats go to 15%. Some people like theirs at 8% or some people like theirs at 18%. You know, where's that spray bottle at over here? Just be completely redundant with your sanitation and shouldn't be any issue here. Oh, 
That's what I'm gathering. Sanitize. I said redundant. <coughs> So that looks good. What do you think? Clean? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go dump this out in the sink now. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna save all this. So we're actually doing uh, one less bottle of honey this time, so we need to be taking calculations as we go. The biggest thing is to make sure that the gravity is there and you have enough space for everything. Because you can take, you know, you start this and two or three days go buy another pound of honey and throw it in there and it'll be fine. Yeah. As long as it's still fermenting, as long as that yeast is still alive, it'll ferment. Man made meat actually did an experiment with that. Where he took two gallon carboys, uh, two one gallon carboys, and he just put honey in one and didn't mix it at all. And he took honey and put it in another and mixed it. And he wanted to see if they would both ferment, would they both go to the same gravity, the same alcohol level, same everything. Where's the, uh, oh, there's the caps. Oh, and would it, would it still work and how would it taste? And he did and it worked fine and it still tasted fine. It, I think it, it fermented a little slower because it wasn't all mixed together. But other than that, it was fine. So who's your official taste tester? Me. Sometimes I get my wife a little bit, but she's not a big drinker. Um, she doesn't really like her taste. And I have people that I know, like a lot of my family members, they drink wine, but they drink dry wine. And I tend to like sweet meat. I mean, you can make it dry. In fact, that, that over there that I brought over the, the sample today that's being made is dry. Um, I, I tend to like it sweet. She likes sweet, but she doesn't like it when it's first being made. <coughs> and what you brought over today, that's a banana yeah. raisin? or No, that's flavors? just a basic mead. Uh, oh, okay. That's got, um, so I got that from City Sitting Brews. That's their recipe. It's essentially, it's water, uh, orange zest, Raisins, honey, and yeast, and that's that's their recipe. So I decided to try it because it seems to be a pretty popular recipe. And how long yet you got on that before? Um, about another month. That that is not the one month mead. <laughs> that's a if you're making mead that way, like the way they do it, it's about two months to bottle roughly um, but they don't put like nutrients in their stuff they don't put uh, like pectic enzyme or anything in their brews and 
because they want to do like all natural brewing, right? Which is fine. If they like the stuff they make, you know. Yeah. But it's uh, it just takes longer. I saw this and I saw you could do this in a week and that's two months and I was like, well, maybe I should try the one that's ready in a week and see, see how well that works out. Is that the last bottle? That's the last one. An arm workout. Yeah. Try shaking up the gallon for two and a half minutes. <laughs> shaking up those gallon carboys. I'll get there. I think that's where the idea for the shake weight came from. Oh, really? I think it was an anger guy standing in the bank line. Before I dump the rest of this in, so we'll mix it and then we'll take the gravity on it, right? Or do you want to just do it all and then put a good bottle on it and put it in the no, let's uh, let's get the uh, let's get our our uh, reading rack and then leave it there. I think we're I, right now. I know we're we're thoroughly uh, mixed. Mixed. So this is already drained down. That still hasn't been touched, and this has only had this meat in it. The important thing when you're taking a gravity reading is to make sure it floats. If this thing doesn't float, you are not taking a gravity reading. You're playing the scientist. So right now we are getting a um our tub with the foam. 1.100, so I would put a little more water in there. What does 1.100 mean? Like 20% more? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, when you get the estimated, that's not to tell you what exactly it will make. That's just saying what it has the potential to make. 1.000 would make about 14% or 13%, roughly. Yeah. Right. Mix that back up. So again, when you're measuring the gravity, you're measuring the density of the liquid, which will tell you how much sugar is in it because it's just water and honey. And you know that when you're looking at the gravity, water is 1.000. And that's how you do it. And alcohol actually has slightly less density than water. So it can actually go below 1.000. Yeah, so now it's at about 1.098. So that's 0.001. So you could probably wait because we're going to put the fermenting and the uh, stuff in there as well. Fermenting and yeast. So are we good right there? At that gravity? Mm -hmm. Okay. Realistically, if you go to your, your local uh, brew supply store and talk to the people there and get familiar with them, you, your prices on your stuff will generally be pretty competitive with your online prices. Mm -hmm. And you're supporting local businesses and you as have, opposed to like Amazon. Right, yeah. 
local business. I mean, that's I run a local small business, so I mean, it's I know that you want people to come to you, not to go to dealers and stuff like that. So. Important. Plus, you got a guy there that knows what he's doing. If you have any questions or anything, you just ask, and they're more than welcome. To, more than happy to help you. Yeah, that's the cool thing I like is like so we went to uh, Brewhound and Fort Worth to get the stuff, and I think this BrewhoundSupplies.com is the guy's website, and he gives you his card. He says, you know, basically, if you have any questions about brewing, if you something happens, you get stuck fermentation, just call me, and I'll I'll help you out. I answer your questions. I'll let you know. And so you get advice from him, and, and you know, like I said, I always try to go to him first. If he doesn't have something or can't get something, then I'll go online and buy it. So this part was good. I got to respray this off. It already had dust collected on it, so okay. I'm going to spray this off real quick. So we had a little problem with getting this in there if it was on the yeah. container. It's, it's just a little tight, which, I mean, it should be tight as a rat. That's what we said in telecom. Shut down a little bit. There we go. And the same as the last one, I'm going to chop off a little bit so we don't have this huge elbow sticking up off the top here. If I can figure out how to operate a knife without going to the ER. That would make me happy. No ER. And that's trips. that. And you just made. Roughly eight gallons of mead, roughly. Seven gallons of mead. So from here, <laughs> from here, what would be the next steps? Um, so, the way I've seen this done online, um, with the British one month mead, he takes it every day and he'll whisk it and get that CO2 out. And then every two days for a week, he adds nutrients, right? So, um, would be two teaspoons uh, per made O every two days for the week. And then after that, you're supposed to rack it into a new carboy and then let it clear, um, which takes you know roughly three weeks. What I would probably do, or will probably do, would take it in individual carboys and stick it in the fridge and cold crash it. And what that is, is when you cold crash it, you are essentially put in the fridge, the, the liquid gets cool, it expands. As it expands, that yeast and the things inside the uh, mead clump together and they fall to the bottom and it clears faster. So instead of clearing in, um, instead of clearing in three weeks, you can have it clear in a week, right? Now, I don't know what it's gonna taste like in a week compared to three <laughs> weeks, but you can do that. And then, um, so that's probably what I'd do. And then let it sit and then um, bottle it. And at that point, you're safe to drink it. What I like to do is, you know, roughly one gallon of meat will make 3.758 liters of uh, liquid. So you can drink the first 7.58 liquid, um, or you can drink the first two and just let one sit and age because they say as it time goes by, the flavors change. So that's so what I try to do with to. my stuff is leave like one bottle of each, but I haven't been able to do that yet. <laughs> I don't blame you. Meat's pretty good. I got that banana wine at home, and I've been sitting drinking that, and I've got like one more bottle left. But I've got two gallons of mead that are, you know, at that point, that we're, well, that one's ready to rack. The other one's, other one's almost ready to rack, and then it'll be point the bottle and let them sit. So we'd like to move that off of here, and let's let's show off what you have over here. Yeah, okay. that's what I was thinking. Let me move this. Let me set that Yeah. I really appreciate you coming over today and showing us how to do this. It's no problem. It's fun. He'll be back. I like to cook and uh, I like to share stuff with people. You know, like that's part of the reason I love to cook because I love to. Uh, I'm fat and I like to eat, but <laughs> I like to cook with other people. So it's yeah. uh, you know this was the next logical step. <laughs> and that's the cool thing is you can just enjoy this yourself or you can. Um, Set it up for certain dishes. Yeah. So, this is that city setting brews basic mead recipe. This is dry, so it shouldn't be any sugar in there. And I don't expect it to taste great. It's still carbonated. It hasn't been degassed. 
It hasn't been racked over, um, but I will rack it. Oh, I forgot to sanitize that uh, siphon to rack it with. It's all right. Look at it. Just sample it right now. So I did add too much orange peel to this. I recommend a quarter to a half an orange, and I did the whole orange. But the more of a citrusy flavor. It's you definitely you smell the orange. It's nice. It smells. <clears throat> See, I think anything is done with with orange smells like Grand Marnier. Grand Marnier, yeah. So it has that Grand Marnier, but it also has um, that mead smell. So that fermented honey, yeah. Very orangey. Very okay. Yeah. That's why I said I put too much orange peel in it. Um, next batch I do, I won't use as That's much good, though because of that. Did you want to try a little taste of it or? Sure. It's good. It is really good. That's gonna come out really nice. This is a really popular recipe that you know, like I said, they city setting brews they came up with, and um, they use dry orange zest, just a pinch or two. I'm not filling it up because it's not. It's a taste. If it was done and aged, then I'd, I'd pour your whole glass, but. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> and now if Eric disappears, you know what happened to him. I'm right here. That is really nice. It's kind of smooth, but with a citrusy has that orange spice, that, yeah. that spice that orange So has. like in cooking, that's what you do. If you want something to have like orange or lemon flavor, like that lemon juice will cook out of, of some of what you're cooking. But you add lemon zest in there, you're gonna get those essential oils from that lemon. It's gonna be really lemony and that flavor doesn't go away. So that can be kind of nice. I'm just gonna take a little sample of it too. Might I'm as well, you have it open. By the time it gets done, he's only gonna have half a bottle. <laughs> Because yeah. we've all been testing it. <laughs> you know, I really liked the uh, the banana the banana wine. I really liked it, even though it's it's super sweet, which it's supposed to be. It's a dessert wine, as you explained. Um, and I typically don't like banana flavored anything, you know. And I think it's the fact that you use actual banana in it. Yeah, gave it that distinct banana flavor, not banana. You know, flavoring. flavoring you know but it definitely has that that viscous syrupy uh, it was thick yeah yeah but you know it's and that was there. that was city study brewing recipe as well and they put the raisins in there which gives it body it gives it viscosity and then the bananas do too i think mm -hmm. and i think that's why it was so thick but when i put that on ice and let some of that ice melt yeah. into it it was amazing i noticed it when we <laughs> They put it in the freezer the other night for an hour or two, and then I tasted it again. It was definitely a lot more smooth and yeah, yeah, it's delicious though. So uh, we're gonna get these going, and we're gonna try to keep you guys up to date throughout the entire process. But uh, as we go through, and uh, you know, stay tuned and uh, keep us keep us uh, posted on what you think about Larry starting a cooking channel. I think it would be awesome. He he doesn't give himself enough credit. I think he's a really good cook. Most people do. And uh, I think we should do a cook channel with Larry. But either way, until next time, keep drinking me. Bottoms up. Yeah. <laughs>